are only given to the priest of the Most High God. And so the priest addressed him in the temple and he became angry and wroth at the priest. But God showed his displeasure in King Uzziah when he smote him with leprosy standing in the temple. And it was unlawful for a leper to be out among the people, let alone in the temple of the Most High God. Amen. So because of his mistake, because of him getting out of his lane, tell your neighbor, stay in your lane. Amen. Everything will be all right if we just stay in our lane. Amen. And the lesson here is don't mishandle your authority or our position. We have to stay in our place. We must stay in our lane of assignment and do what God has said for us to do. Amen. Every man, the Bible says that every man ought to abide in his own calling. Doing this will always facilitate our, facilitate our need for one another. Mm -hmm. We must appreciate the gifts that God has given us. And the Bible says, in, if, if we look back at chapter 6, and I'm going to dissect it, and you all just walk with me if you would. Amen. Thank you, Lord. In the sixth chapter of Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high, and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. And it goes on to talk about he saw the worship that was taking place in the heavenlies. And he was so moved by what he saw, he experienced God in a way that he had never experienced him before. Isaiah entered into worship and saw the king of glory in a way that he had never seen him before. And on this weekend, I would say that some of us probably experience God on another level. Amen. Because entering into God's presence reveals the awesomeness and holiness of a righteous God. And at the same time, it reveals to us just how frail and vulnerable we are as human beings. How unworthy we are. We see who we are without the mercy and righteousness and favor of God, but we see how much we need him as our creator and author and finisher of our faith. We see our unworthiness in the flesh and our need for an awe-inspiring and incredible God. In verse 5, then said I, woe is me, he recognized himself. Once we see who we really are in God's presence during our worship experience, God then makes a transformation while we're there. How many of you experience a transformation this weekend? A heart transplant. I needed a heart transplant. I needed to get rid of some things that filtered into my mind, filtered into my spirit. Because of situations, because of people, because of life. How many of you know life happens? Tell you that, but life happens. Being in his presence also prepares us for God's instructions through his word. How many of you were instructed this weekend? Amen. God will give you instructions when you're in his presence. He will tell you what to do, where to go, what to say. But we got to get where? In his presence. Our hearts must become open to the word in order for the word to take root. That's what I love about elder faith. When you're in worship, you lose, you lose track of time. Time becomes unimportant because you're in the presence of the Most High God. And that's what I love about you, Evangelist Mosby, that you allow God to do whatever he wants to do as long as he has to do it. Because you know that God does not operate. He, he does not operate or he's not bound by time. God operates in eternity. And we in this present world, we are so ruled by time Amen. that we oftentimes, we don't allow ourselves the time for God to really speak Amen. and to minister to us the way he really wants to. Amen. So for that reason, I can appreciate this conference even more. In verse 6, the, Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. 
God has assigned his word, his messengers, to minister to our need and our lack while in his presence. How many of you were ministered to this weekend? You were ministered through the word. I'm telling you that word was so rich it was enough word to save the whole world. Thank you, Lord. I appreciate the word. And we have to learn to put the value back in the word. So many times we look for deep revelation. But you know what the Lord says? We've got to get the small things, the small pots of right. We've got to learn how to love each other right. Treat each other right. But in these two verses of scriptures, it shows that in his presence, God purges. He heals. He delivers. I'm a different person today than I was when I came on Thursday morning. Amen. Because of the word and because of the worship. Amen. How many know that speakers, preachers, we don't all have it together? That's right. That's right. Amen. We're not there yet. Amen. I'm going to speak for me. I'm not there yet. I'm still striving. I'm still pressing. Thank you, Lord. Oh, bless you, God. But how many of you ever took a study, taken a study of an eagle? The eagle is an amazing animal. Yeah. Yeah. It's a wonder why God likened his people to mounting up on eagles' wings and how he said that he saved them. He saved them out of Egypt on eagles' wings. Because an eagle is an amazing, amazing animal. Did you know that an eagle, when it is ill, when it's sick, when it ingests the wrong thing, the eagle will fly to the highest elevation, the highest rock, the highest mountain, and it will prostrate itself and lay out in the sun, the S-U-N sun, and allow the heat of the sun to draw out all of the impurities, all of the, all of the poison that may have been in its body, all the toxins. Did y'all know that? What happens to us in worship? Hallelujah. How many eagles do I have in here? You know how to fly to the highest mountain, get in the presence of the Lord, and allow him, allow the S-O-N son to draw. Hey, God. Something else I learned about the eagle. The eagle goes through something called a molten process. Somewhere during its adult life. And in this process, it's a state of depression. Well, the eagle, in all of its might and grandeur, is brought to a low state. Anybody ever been to a low state? Any eagle? You ever found yourself in a low state? But tell somebody it's a process that I have to go through. But the eagle, during the molten process, it builds up calcium deposits. And the calcium deposits, they, they deposit themselves itself on the beaks and the eagle's talons are their feet. Well, if you know anything about an eagle, in order for them to eat, they have to have their beak, and they have to have their feet because that's what they, they, they uh, hunt and get their food with. But the eagle, during this process, it goes to a valley. <laughs> it goes to a valley. Because during this time, it can't fly. And it begins to walk, not like an eagle, it has to walk like a turkey. It waddles. And what has to happen is this eagle during this time of its life, it has to be, it has to depend on other eagles to feed it because they can't feed themselves during this time. So what other eagles will do, eagles that have already gone through this process, tell somebody what you're going through ain't just for you. The eagles that have already gone through this process, what they will do is they will share food. They'll drop food down into the valley so that the eagle can be strengthened. So it can regain its strength and eventually it can gain enough strength to fly to the highest peak and it will begin to beat out the calcium deposits off of its feet and off of its beak. Isn't that something? I thought that was awesome. So then what you're going through is not just for you. You're just going to tell somebody the molten process. 
But thank God for those that have already gone through the process that can help me make it through. Because what happens is, if that eagle is left alone in the valley, guess what? It will die. Yeah. Yeah. Because it needs the help of the other eagles yeah. Yeah. to help it through that process in time. In verse 8, Isaiah said, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I see and who will go for us? See, that was a transformation that took place in Isaiah. Now in verse 1, he saw the worship that he'd never seen before. He saw the Lord in all of his glory and all of his grandeur. And he, he fell prostrate and he was in all the glory and the worship that he saw. And then he realized in the midst of the worship just how undone he was. Just how unworthy he was. But at the same time, by the time that the worship continued, he had a change of heart, a change of mind. And the Lord had allowed him to realize, I've called you in spite of you. And the Lord asked the question, whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Isaiah forgot about how unworthy he was because he realized that his worth and it was not, it was not in himself, but it was in the God. That he served. Amen. Tell your neighbor, your worthiness is not in yourself. Your strength is not in yourself. But in the God that you serve. He will equip you. He will enable you to do all that he is calling you to do in this season. So in verse 8, God reveals himself to us in worship. And he extends his grace to empower us. Tell somebody empowerment takes place, empowerment takes place. in worship. How many of you will, will uh, admit that you have been in a low place and you've gone into worship to get a release and to get some help? But by the time you got through worshiping God, when you got up, you were a new man. You were a new woman. You had a new mind. You had a new attitude. Am I the only one? Thank you, Lord. But in his presence, we find empowerment and the ability and the courage. How many know we need courage? As he spoke to Joshua in the first chapter, he said, be strong and very courageous. Because he knew that he would need courage in order to be, to complete all that God had called him to do. So we obtain courage to fulfill his will and obey his instructions. Our obedience to God's instructions will bring God's glory in the earth. Say that with me. My obedience, My obedience to, God's to God's instructions will bring him glory, bring him glory in, the earth. in the earth. Thank you, Elder Faith, for being obedient to God's instructions. Because all of us have been able to partake of what God gave you, what God said. And all that we have received this weekend, how many of you know that we got to take it and we got to share it with somebody else? Hallelujah. All that we received, it would, be, it would be a travesty if we took it and kept it to ourselves. But I'm going to get to that in a moment. The more we get into God's presence, the more he will speak and reveal himself and his plan to us. You don't know what to do? You don't know what your next step is? Get in his presence. Amen. Worship him. Listen for his voice. Amen. God has been dealing with me in the last few, few weeks, month or so, in a way that he has and he has heightened my sense and my Come keenness on. in the spirit. And sometimes it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. He'll tell me something and somebody will turn around. I mean, it's, on. one, one Sunday morning I was in praise and worship. Awesome things happen when you get in his worship. And the Lord began to speak to me so fluently. And I said, God, what are you saying? And I began to take out my pen and I began to write all that he was saying. Yeah. And then when the word of the woman of God got up to bring the word of God, I was, I was amazed. Because you know why? Pastor Meriwether, everything that she's preaching, spoken a message, God gave it to me. So after the service, I said, you got to see this. I said, God told me everything you were going to say. 